Okay, in this video we're going to set up our box model in ZBrush and begin our sculpting process. So I'm just going to go ahead and import in my box model that I created. I'll go and find that real quick. So that was uh, Dragon Head Base to ZBrush. Pop that in there and cool. So very, very simple thing to start with. Now just something to point out, um, I have kind of my own little customly configured uh, layout here. So I have all of my most commonly used tools at the bottom, uh, different uh, materials that I use over here on the left, and uh, just, you know, I, I've moved things around. This seems to work optimally for me as a, as a sculptor. Uh, just pointing that out in case you're wondering why my layout might look a bit different than yours. Okay, um, I'm going to go into geometry and I will quickly just divide this a few times and I'm just going to get rid of all the lower subdivisions. I'm just dividing this so that we don't end up with all that nickeling in the actual DynaMesh. So I'll come down to the DynaMesh section and we're going to start out with a DynaMesh resolution of 128 and my theory of working with DynaMesh is that you should start out at the lowest subdivision level that you can and then sculpt as much as you can in that subdivision level. Once you get to a point where you can no longer get more detail or it's too difficult to work in it, only then move up. So I usually will move up in powers of 2. Um, 128 is usually a good starting point. Next place I'll go is 256. And then when I've maxed out 256, I'll move up to 512. So I'm just going to hit DynaMesh. And that goes ahead and applies a DynaMesh um, geometry to my sculpt. So if I look at the um, polyframe right now, we have a nicely um, more or less evenly distributed set of polygons through the DynaMesh. And I usually like to start sculpting with more of a gray material, I find. Now, in order to assist me with sculpting, what I'm going to do is bring in some image planes. So I'm just going to go into the texture menu real quick, and I'm going to dock that over here on the side for the moment. There's an image plane option down in the texture menu, so I'll click on that, and I am going to take a look at my reference views. So basically, um, what I'm at right now is more or less the front view. So just click on front, that way it's nice and locked down. And say load image. Go and find my source images. I'm going to change this to JPEG so I can actually see them. And I'm going to bring in my, uh, well, what I call a side view, but um, as far as ZBrush is concerned, this is actually the front view. So just so we don't get confused, that's what I'm doing. Okay, and I bring that in. Now. I would actually need to adjust this image size so that it matches my um, sculpt size here. So everything is more or less at the right size. Now what I've discovered is, um, after messing around with this, putting this up to a value of about 120 seems to work well. And sometimes I just have to reload that in at the new size. So we'll say, there we go. And I am going to go ahead and just change my model opacity down a little bit so I can see through it. And I'm going to move my model up here. This will just help me to better see what I'm working on. Just somewhere around there seems good. And I'm going to go ahead and store this view. So I say store view. Now I'm going to also go ahead and do um, what's called a right view, basically. It's actually the, um, it's actually what I would consider a front view at the moment. So it's going to retain that image size, so we'll just go to load image, and again, JPEGs, do this front view here. And I'm just going to, again, reposition this up a little bit, somewhere around there looks about right. I think that's about right. Uh, and store this view as well. So now if I move back, you'll see that um, I have to kind of jump through the back view here, but I can basically using these um, keys just move back and forwards from the front to right view just to see how things are holding up. And for the most part here I'm just going to start um, working in, in this view. So uh, there we are. So um, basically the tools that I'm going to work with are just fairly basic. Um, I'm going to work mostly with the uh, move tool to build in and, and block in some volume. Uh, I'm going to work with the clay build-up tool to start doing some initial sculpting and adding of the geometry. And I will also work with um, maybe a couple other tools, and I'll explain them as I go along. 
But to make it a little bit easier and make it a bit faster for all of us, I intend to actually uh, pretty much as soon as I start sculpting, I'm going to just sculpt. I'm not going to worry about talking over it. And then I'll play that back at about four times speed, and then I'll go ahead and I'll and when you watch it, I'll just talk over that so that you get some insight into my process as I go along. So um, just to get really quickly started here, I'm just going to um, before I begin doing that, I'm just going to start blocking in some of this some of this area here for the face. Um, and actually, I might just pull that model opacity back up a little bit higher there. I'm going to kind of work back and forth between what I see here in the image plane and what I actually uh, plan on using for um, the model. So, oh, and there is one thing, one thing I haven't done yet, which is probably pretty important to do. So I'll just undo a little bit of that. Cool. Um, what I did not do was to go in here and ensure under two under transform that my symmetry is on. Now this is not symmetry across X, it's actually symmetry across Z. So I'll make sure we click that on and now you can see that whatever I do on one side gets replicated on the other. Much simpler. Okay, so that's pretty much what I want to do before I begin. Um, and just now I'll just start using the move tool to push things around and eventually once I get the basic volumes blocked in I will start moving off toward um, things like the clay buildup tool and we'll continue from there.